26 January 2021, being awarded All India Best Cadet Trophy by the Honorable Prime Minister. 20th March 2021, formation of an NGO called Team Critical Cause. 4th September 2022, Crown of Miss India International. 1st January 2023, thesis project in Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore in Neuroscience. Different fields, different time, different years, different scenarios, but the same individual. Each field requiring its own set of skills and a way to present yourself. In NCC, the way you wear your uniform matters a lot. So no crease, shirt tucked in there that you can have any room for mistakes, um, collared, buttoned up, there's a way to tie your shoes, nails cut to the core, whereas in pageantry, wearing six inches of heels, one foot in front of the other elegantly, never the heel before the toe. Again, a huge contrast. Even in the fields of research and running an NGO that raises awareness about plasma donation and organ donation, the requirements of skill set was different needing more patience, the ability to do, undo, and redo every task. And there are no flashlights, no cameras, everything is behind the scene. And you keep working patiently towards the goal. Now the reason, so all of this I was doing from Monday to Sunday. So Monday to evening, every day, morning to evening, I would be doing my academics and research. After evening, I will read up on what's happening in the news, would stay in touch with that and practice my Q&As for the pageant. From Saturday for my ramp walk practice and Sunday NCC parade. So every day I was working on it. Day after day, month after month, the practice kept on going and I'm not even getting into the details of diet and exercise. The only thing that kept me going was the fact that I didn't want to excel in just one field. I wanted to excel in all of those fields. Being a cadet, Discipline and time management was ingrained in me. While I was preparing for the Republic Day camp, I learned the importance of unity and teamwork. So for us, it was always all for one and one for all. So if anybody was late for an early morning fall in, everybody would face the consequences. But no one would complain, even utter a single word while we got those extra rounds on the ground and those extra push-ups. Because we were all in it together, we were one squad. And it was because of them and with them that I learned how to push myself beyond my limits, beyond when my body was giving up. In NCC, I learned how to be a better leader, how to motivate not just myself, but those around me, my squad, when we were all tired. I learned to be a better speaker and more importantly, a better person. And these skills I could apply in pageantry. When I would go on stage, my communication skills allowed me to get an edge over other contestants. My discipline and time management skills made sure that I could go through the most hectic days without cribbing even a bit about it. My ability to push the circumstances to expect the unexpected allowed me to face all the last minute unforeseen difficulties that would come our way. The skill of patiently working towards a task after failed experiments, getting up and doing those experiments again, things I learned in the lab taught me that every failure brought me closer to success. So for me, all the fields were very closely in integrated, despite their contrast. And that was, those were the fields that I chose. For you, those fields would be very different. You will have different interests, different niche. The question is, how do you go about choosing your field? And the answer is very simple. It boils down to basically trying out different things and essentially finding what makes you happy. What is your calling? What are you passionate about? The key is to make your career, build your career on those things so that you always go to work happy. And when you love what you're doing, no matter what comes in your way, you will push through and try to excel in that field. But finding your field is just the first step. There are a billion things that go wrong after that. And in my journey, I learned three important lessons 
that truly changed my life and I'd like to share those with you and hopefully they'll be a help to you too. So for me, I always like to write things and plan things to the end. I'm a person who will jot down what I want to accomplish in my life to the end. And that helps me basically in any circumstances, in any problems, when I know things are not going well, I remind myself of what lies on the other side. And then I can push through knowing that the other side is what I want to go and that is where I want to reach. So I'll form a vague timeline and then I'll break it down into manageable and achievable goals. And I also accept that these goals and this so-called path will change along the way as my priorities change, as circumstances change. But the path is not written in stone. I can adjust it to reach the final goal. And their perception of what you should be doing can always be a demotivating factor. It surely was for me. I have had my fair share of advices of people telling me of what I should be doing, what I should be following, what my career should be. So when I was pursuing my pistol shooting, I was practicing. I had already played nationals and I was practicing for my selection trials. And without mincing words, I was told, you know what, you should stick to your academics because the train has already left. You're already too late. For any sports, if you want to excel in it, you need to start young. And if you're in your 20s, you're too late already. So it's better to go back and do your studies. But who will tell them the story of Colonel Sanders, who at the age of 65, started KFC, gave the world KFC, and broke all age barriers? Even in the field of pageantry. Before I started pageantry, I thought of doing a talent hunt competition. It was a national level talent hunt competition. And I thought, I'm a tabla player. I'm a Bharatanatyam dancer. This is the right place to start for me. So before I deep dive into Miss India and other pageants, let's start here. So I go ahead, I'm in my college, I get ready, I give my initial college auditions, I qualify, I reach the semi-finale and I'm out. So I go ahead and I ask, where could I have improved? And I'm told my stage presence was off and I need to work on my stage presence. I say, all right, I can do that. I can work on my stage presence. So I take one year and now I've also started NCC. So I'm getting the extra input and extra training from NCC. Um, I work one year, work on myself. I am back. This year, again, I qualify the college editions. I go for the semi-finale. I make through. I reach the finale. I pass through. I reach the top five. And I get a subtitle called Miss Talented. So I'm not the winner or the runner-up or the second runner-up. The winner goes to represent the, reg the region in the national finale and that's what I want it to be. I get the subtitle, not satisfied, but I say, okay, I have put my mind to it. I've started this, so I will see it through next year. Corona comes in, two years are gone, but I have not stopped working on myself. So after two years, when the competition comes back, I say, okay, now I'm better than I was last time. I've surely put in a lot of work. Let's go at it again because I'm not a quitter and I want to do it. I want to see it through. So I go in. I go again, qualify my college editions, qualify the semi-finale, reach the finale, reach the top five and nothing. So last time I had a subtitle and now I didn't have anything. And I'm here wondering, why is my progress happening backwards? People improve. I am losing out marks. What's happening? So I go back and take feedback again from the same person. So this is the head of that uh, competition who has seen me throughout all three years. And I say, where am I going wrong? Why, why am I not improving? Why am I not winning? What's happening? And they say, do you want the bitter truth? I say, all right, give me the bitter truth, knowing it's not going to be, it is going to be bitter. Uh, they say, Kashish, I don't think you should be coming to pageants or modeling. I can see you in the uniform, sure. But modeling is, I don't know, I don't see that as your cup of tea. I don't understand why you keep coming back to this. And I say, because this is where I want to be. But then I'm given the example of Neeraj Chopra, that he's an Olympian. And he's doing well over there, but you won't expect to see him in ads or modeling. And similarly, I should stick to what they thought I should be doing in life. Well, newsflash, we all saw Neera Chopra on the cover of Vogue magazine. We also saw him in ads. And he's still bringing us medals and still inspiring us. 
Even in the field of academics, I was asked to stick to the research work and the lab work, being perceived as not focused enough for having more interests, for wanting to do more things. What made things more difficult was the fact that anything that I ever tried, any competition, I never got and it in the first go. So I'd have to go over it two to three times to even come close to winning. And this happened so much so that it became a running joke in my family. But today I stand before you, the same person who was asked to choose one field over and over again, told that I can't do this, I can't do that, as Miss India International, as All India Best Cadet and a budding scientist, and someone who's passionate about the Indian culture and its art forms, being a tabla player and a Bharatnatyam dancer. And the reason I could do all of this was because I refused to give up. So ladies and gentlemen, that is my first lesson. That no matter what people say is impossible or say that won't happen for you, if you have seen a dream for yourself, you have to go after it, you have to go and achieve it. I didn't want to be an either or option. I wanted to be A and D, I wanted to be and, I wanted to be Miss India and a scientist and an officer and that is what I did. I didn't want to pick one field. I wanted to go after all the fields and excel in all of them. And that is what I ended up choosing and ended up following. So if you are someone who hasn't been able to take their career, take the profession of their choice because of many reasons, either lack of awareness or lack of opportunities or financial situation or different circumstances, does that mean that it has to be the end of it? The answer is no. You can still go back to it. You can still start it, it small. You don't have to leave your current job. So, I need to remember this thing. If you don't get a job, it's a different thing. But if you don't do it, it's a wrong thing. Keep your understanding with your own mind. Your name will be your name. But when you are following this journey of going towards your goals and your passion, it's not just other people's perception that makes a difference, that hampers your growth. What also matters is how you perceive yourself. Because the brain, you see, it's a very tricky little organ. Whatever you feed, it will amplify. So if you feed it doubt and insecurities, that's what you will be clouded by. That's what will consume you. High school Kashish did not understand that. So I always knew I wanted to be Miss India and represent India internationally. But when puberty hit and my skin changed and my body changed, I wouldn't dare say the word pageantry out loud. Because I thought Miss India was supposed to be beautiful. And when I looked in the mirror, I saw a girl struggling to accept her acne, struggling to accept her body, and thinking that this is something that I can't even pursue. Moreover, being called ugly by your friends just increases your insecurities. High school is a tough time for everybody. Everybody is just dealing with their insecurities and projecting onto others. So how I wish I could go to all of our younger selves and tell them that you don't need any glow up to happen. All I had to do was accept and see that I was already beautiful. And I used to trouble myself so much thinking about I couldn't make it there, not realizing that in pageantry, it's not just the most beautiful, just looks that matter. The one who's crowned as the winner is someone who brings their own element to the organization. Someone who can inspire young girls, young children. Someone who enters the room and can make her presence felt. Someone who can use that platform for the good. And that was my second lesson, which I learned rather late. To accept myself the way I was, that I was beautiful already. Because beauty does not lie in your looks and how you look like. It lies in what you do, how, what impact you make in others' lives, how your mere existence can make smi bring smiles on people's faces. That is beauty. And we're all beautiful just halfway through as we grow up. But again, remember how I said, brain, a tricky little thing? So once again, my mindset became my, be became my biggest nemesis. As a child, I loved being on stage. So any chance of participating in a competition, I'd go and take it. And as I started getting these smaller victories, I also started questioning my achievements and accolades. 
I started doubting myself, second guessing everything off stage, thinking that I'm not good enough, thinking whether I'm even deserving of the success. And it would get to so much that I would make myself miserable. To a point that I started thinking maybe what others were talking about me was true. So when I would go for pageant auditions, I think, what am I doing here? I am a science student. I should stick to that. Neuroscience is my key. That's where I should stick to. I'll do better there. When I would be in the lab doing research, I think, I like the cameras. I like the flashlights. That's where I should be, right? What's my true calling? I would give an excellent presentation with answering every doubt, 90% of the question. But if I got stuck on that one question, in my head, there was this voice going off. Now they'll know you're a fraud. Now they'll know that all this... And there is a name to this feeling. It's called the imposter syndrome. Where you question all your achievements. Where you have a persistent fear of being found as a fraud. People knowing that you've lied your entire journey. Whatever you've done till now has been a lie. Despite evidence of your achievement despite evidence of your accolades. You question yourself, you think you're not deserving of success. And what confused me the most was the people around me, the people who were close to me, always thought so much highly of me than I did of myself. It was only later when I had done so much work on my mindset, on changing my mindset, I realized the reason they thought so highly of me was because they saw me for who I truly was rather than for what I had lied myself into believing. And that stuck with me. I realized I am not what I am tricking myself into believing. That we are not the mean voice in our head. We are so much more than that voice. You all are so much more capable of doing so much more. And we've all been lying ourselves into believing that we're not. But there is also a possibility that you may have an entirely different journey and may face different problems and different struggles. And on days when you feel like giving up, I hope that these few lines serve as a reminder to not. So, Sahi kaha gaya hai, Pani ko barf banne mein samay lagta hai. Dhali huye suraj ko nikalne mein samay lagta hai. To haar nahi maanni hai, aage badhte jana hai, apne hausle buland rakhne hai, aur mein aapko vaade se keh sakti hoon. आपकी मंजिलें जरूर प्राप्त होंगी आपको थैंक यू धन्यवाद